And good morning, everyone. I know that you all just muted yourself. So if you're saying good morning back, we can't hear you, but we'll take some waves. <laughs> Great to see everyone this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us, Pomona Fellowship, Church of the Brethren. I'm Pastor Lauren, and it's so good to be worshiping with you on this Sunday morning, this Mother's Day morning, when we will give thanks to God for the blessings that we have in our lives today. This morning's worship service will be centered around a story from the book of Exodus when the Israelites are wandering through the wilderness and God provides them with an abundance of blessing, but they have a test as to how they are to use this abundance of blessing. So that will be our worship theme today, the test of abundance. And first we will turn to our opening music, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. And we will hear in this, in this hymn, um, themes of the Israelites wandering and God's provision for them in the wilderness. So let us listen or sing together. We'll turn now to our call to worship. Our readers this morning are John and Karen Stewart. So thank you to John and Karen for being our readers today. And whenever you are ready, you may begin. Are you on mute again? I'm on mute. In the midst of the desert heat, God heard the cries of the people. Help us, Lord. Have mercy upon us. Manna was given, and water gushed forth from a rock. Lord, have mercy upon us. 
in the midst of the deserts of fear and frustration, God will provide for our needs. Lord, come to us and heal us. Amen. Amen. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Mm -hmm. Generous God, we call upon your name today, like the Israelites did when they were hungry and thirsty. We may not be physically hungry today, God, or literally thirsty, but we do hunger and thirst for your presence in our lives. Help us to recognize when you have placed miracles and blessings of abundance in our paths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Laura, you can leave that screen up because we are going to turn to our first scripture reading, which comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, 2 through 4, and 9 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Thank you. Just like the people of Israel cried out to God, we too bring our prayers to God this morning. So what would you like for us to be praying for? Joys in your life that we can celebrate with you or sorrows or concerns that we can help you carry this day? You can unmute your microphone if you have something you'd like to share. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad my computer is working again for <laughs> getting on some of the Zoom meetings. Uh, I also wanna thank people for uh, birthday wishes, and I'm also especially grateful that I don't have to get sung to for another five years, so I'm not that old. So. <laughs> birthday blessings, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to just say I saw a very touching story on TV yesterday. I'm, I think it's in Florida, but I'm not 100 sure. A gentleman in a horrific car accident, five cars, a pickup was dangling over the water. It looked like the causeway going to Key West. And the vehicle was totering and in the accident a young baby about 18 months was thrown into the water 25 feet below and this gentleman who was in hit also i think he was one of the five cars he had a daughter of his own in the car without even hesitating dove into the water saved that baby and uh it was just so heart rendering and, and what a thing to do on the day before mother's day so God bless that family, and let's say a prayer for everyone. Thank you, Frank. Wow. Lauren, that was in Maryland, and oh. um, just outside Ocean City, Maryland. So, of course, it was a big story here, but. Wow, okay. It was local. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Frank, and thank you, Nancy. Prayer request, because um, my daughter, Ariana, had a a co-worker who was in a tragic seven car pile up and she and her sister and her six month old son were all killed in the accident and her husband was driving the car and he survived so um just i'd really like you to lift her name was lisa i don't know the rest of them we would met them on easter at their church but if you could keep him in your prayers today i'm sure that this is a really rough day for him. Thank you, Norma. And of course, you can pray for the house to sell this week, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I already it's mentioned my joy, cool. which is <clears throat> celebrating Mother's Day this morning with the mother of my grandson and the mother of my great grandchildren. We celebrate. I, with I, I bring a joy because Myrna Ray is making great progress at Woods. Good. And she has um, 
On Monday, she's through with the quarantine. They're giving her very strong physical therapy every day. And she said it hurts. And I said, that's good because that means something's happening. And uh, she's going to be able on Monday, uh, there'll be a standing time at 11 each day that she'll get to see Mark outside. So that's a great uh, movement on the health, return to health for Myrna Ray. I'd like, to, I'd like to ask for prayers for the family of our daughter-in-law's mother. Our daughter-in-law is Wendy Stewart. She is the wife of my son. Her mother, Sharon McDonald Martin, lost her firstborn son, Gregory. Funeral services will be at Real Life LA Church on the 22nd of May. Thank you, John. It's been a tough time for that family. Yes. I'd like to bring Rochelle to you again. Tomorrow is her birthday. She will be, oh my goodness, 35. Mm -hmm. And um, she's still really struggling with her health. She says she's getting gradually worse and worse. Um, Joe, just pray for God, pray for her doctors. Pray for wisdom. <clears throat> yeah. I'd like to bring the uh, country of India to our attention as they are struggling so much with COVID. Um, they are turning people away because the hospitals are so full in the hospitals. They don't have enough oxygen and anything for people who are just dying on the streets from COVID. Um, it's really horrible over there. Um, People were selling oxygen, which turned out to be um, fire extinguishers to hospitals. And it's just been really bad. So if we could keep uh, India in our prayers. Hi, everybody. Like it's Leslie. I'm sorry, I think I'm talking over somebody. Am I, am I okay? Go ahead, Leslie. All right. My dad, um, my dad's name is Bill Worth and he's in the hospital right now and should check out on Monday but we had a pretty scary incident on um, Saturday night, no, Friday, Friday night. And um, I just want to, my joy is that we live so close by that my dad just called Trader Joe's and said, hey, do you mind taking me to the hospital? And we were able to jump in our car and our company was so supportive and we just took off and we were able to bring him to the hospital just in the nick of time. So we were feeling very grateful for that, but continued prayers for his healing and that his prognosis would be one that would allow him to still feel free and independent the way he likes to be. So uh, if we could pray for his health. And of course, for my mom, who's very worried. So thank you. I'd like to thank, thank everybody for their prayers for my brother, Doug Scholl. Uh, the surgery went well. They sent him home, home within 24 hours. Uh, I would ask maybe continued prayers that the infection that he's had in the past does not return. Thank you. I would really like to share a joy that we got the office moved to this last week. It was um, started out as a stressful week and uh, I, I just, it was one of those weeks that by the end I, th I was thinking, what was I worried about? Um, I especially, especially want to thank all the helpers that some came at a moment's notice that I needed help uh, just doing little things around the office that I can't really do. Um, all you helpers know who you are. Um, all the helpers that helped on Monday for the move, uh, Paul and Laura to help me get unpacked and um, the uh, the main joy is that uh, the final, final piece will happen tomorrow when we plug in our new phones mm -hmm. and you'll be able to use the church phone system again. Um, and that's the, that will be the final piece. Everything else is working internet and, uh, and it's a really nice office and I invite everybody to come by and, and have a look and have a visit. I have a joy also. I'm going to be going with my daughter Susan and my two grandkids up to Yosemite for a long weekend. Uh, we are going to have to cut it one day short because Sarah found out she has league 
swim finals at Bonita High School on Monday. So we will be coming home Sunday. And Lauren, I'm sorry, but I just realized that's your baby shower that I'm going to miss. But oh. I'll try to, I'll, will you be taping it? We're recording it, I mean? I don't know. We Could we? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I thought, well, shake her head. Well, yeah, we'll look into that. Or, or I can try to watch it I, through the I phone could, on the way home. <laughs> I could stand in for you. No, but uh, we can record it. We can record it. Just press the button when it's time. So that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. I'd like to express thanks for everybody that really helped with the moves. You know, we had moves on Monday and on Friday, and uh, they went smoothly. And the company that we used was really efficient and did a really good job. Uh, I was very stressed over it, and it ended up working well. Praise God. Going back to the shower, since it was just brought up, I want to remind everybody to please RSVP. Um, I, I don't think I've heard from everybody that I that I think is probably gonna come. So please remember to send me an email. Are there any other prayer requests this morning? Yeah, I just want to say, I failed to mention that I did have my first COVID shot a couple of weeks ago at City of Hope. And I will get the second one uh, a week from tomorrow. Uh, I didn't have any ill effects, uh, but I don't know. I've heard a lot of stories about people having something happen when they had their second one so but anyway I'll, I'm going to get that anyway so uh, thank you for thinking of me mine was fine if you want to hear a good news story <laughs> okay thank you I feel much better now <laughs> I'd like I'd like to ask prayers for a friend Joe who's having open heart surgery on Friday thank you Yvonne I have a joy to share at my daughter's Lori school in Chino. Uh, they had a visit from the helpful Honda people this week. Uh, their vice principal is very good about getting, finding ways for recognition for her teachers. She uh, had Lori get an award at the county level two years ago. And this year she nominated um, Lori's team member, Robin, for the Honda award. And they got $5,000 worth of science equipment to use in their school. And it was a total surprise to Robin and she was just beyond surprised, but it will benefit the whole school. But, uh, you know, it was in recognition of all that she has done, you know, piecemeal, et cetera, how we teachers do get by, et cetera. And some really nice new equipment that the whole school will benefit from. So it was truly a blessing. Mm. What a and they actually made the news. If anybody have to see it on Fox News this week, it was or will be on the news. And uh, they had a nice clip of the school too. It's Briggs <laughs> in uh, elementary in Chino. Well, we certainly celebrate. Wonderful. Two Bonita schools also got the helpful Honda people um, bringing things to the special ed teachers, a couple of them. It was nice. Wonderful. Well, there is certainly a lot on our hearts and on our minds this morning, joys that we celebrate and concerns that we bring to God. So why don't we come together and lift all of these things up before God today? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, in fear and excitement, you were birthed into this world by your mother, Mary. She was chosen to give you life, to nurture you into adulthood, and to foster your friends after your death, resurrection, and ascension. We are also children of mothers, mothers who gave us life in fear and excitement. We raise this prayer today to say thank you for the women who gave us life. We celebrate the mothers who sought to be better mothers than they had experienced. We honor the mothers who nurtured their children towards adulthood with grace and strength. We give thanks for the women who mothered without the ties of giving birth. 
We acknowledge this morning, God, the mothers who failed, and we ask your grace to be upon them and us. We recognize the mothers who said, I can't do this, and offered their children to be mothered by someone else. We pray for the children who do not know their mothers. We hurt with the women who pray to be a mother and who struggle with infertility and with all those who will never be mothers. We cry with the women who have lost a child ripped apart by this grief. We stand with the grandmothers who are raising their grandchildren towards adulthood. In the name of our heavenly parent, God, we pray for all mothers. In the name of the child born in Bethlehem, we pray for all girls. In the name of holy wisdom, we pray for your mercy for all women. God, who is mother and father to us all, we also lift up so much else to you on this day, the prayers of our hearts. We give you thanks this morning, God, and celebrate the joy of the unexpected blessings that Lori's school received in the science equipment and the donations that will benefit the whole school. We give you thanks and praise for all of the people from our church who stepped up this week to help both our office move into our new office space and for our storage to be moved into our storage units. We thank you for the safety and the smoothness that, that those moves experienced this week. We celebrate with Bill that he was born this week, all those years ago. We thank you for his gift of his presence among us and that he will receive his next COVID shot. We celebrate and are in awe of the everyday heroes among us, especially the story of the man who jumped into the water to save the baby. We thank you for him. We pray your blessing upon him and all who know him. We give you thanks for Myrna Ray continuing to make progress after her fall. We give you thanks that Doug's surgery went well this week and pray for his continued healing and strength. And we celebrate with Shirley as she heads to Yosemite with her girls this week. We pray that trip would be safe and full of blessing. And God, we also lift up these worries and concerns to you today. We grieve with Ariana's coworker, Lisa, with her, with her husband who lost so many of his dear family members this week. We pray you'd be with him in his grief and for all who knew them and missed them. We don't know why these things happen, God. We lift them to you. We do pray that Chuck and Norma's house on the market would be appealing to a buyer so they can move on in their transition. We pray for Yvonne's friend, Joe, as he anticipates surgery later this week. We pray for his doctors and nurses as they care for him. We also lift up to you The family of Gregory, Sharon's son, and all those who knew him and loved him, we pray they would be comforted by your presence, that his memory would be a blessing to all those who knew him. We continue our prayers for Rochelle as the mystery of her health still refuses to be solved. We pray for Rochelle that she would be strengthened by you and that her doctors and her team would have insight and a better understanding of what's going on and how to help her. 
We pray for Leslie's dad, Bill. We're grateful that he was able to receive care so quickly, but we pray for him and his diagnosis and that he would find the strength and the resources that he needs at this time. And we lift up our sisters and brothers in India who just continue to be ravaged by this virus. As our part of the country and the world starts to open back up, it can be easy to forget that this is still deadly and still killing people around the world. So we just pray for India. We pray that resources would be available for hospitals, for homes, for vaccines. And God, we know that there's so many more things that even if they weren't mentioned today, they're on our hearts. And so we thank you for hearing the prayers that are spoken and not spoken. Thank you for communities that help us celebrate together and grieve together. For all these things, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We turn now to our second scripture reading this morning. So Laura will bring those words back up on our screen. And John and Karen will read once again for us. Psalm 78, verse 23 through 29. The Lord commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he let out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp and all around their dwellings. And they ate and were filled well, for he gave them what they craved. Thank you, John. Our scripture lesson this morning is one that's probably familiar to a lot of us. <clears throat> The Israelites traveling in the wilderness after their miraculous escape from slavery in Egypt find their supply of food and nourishment to be dwindling. Complaining to Moses, they reminisce about the good old days back in Egypt where they could rely on regular meals. Did God bring us out here to die of starvation, they grumble. So the text tells us that the Lord says to Moses, I will rain bread from heaven. And each day the people should go out and collect enough for each day. In this way, I will test them to see if they follow my instructions. It seems a little odd, doesn't it? That God responds to the genuine cries and complaints of the people with a test. Why? Wouldn't a loving God, the ultimate provider, simply answer their prayers by providing something to eat? Does receiving enough nourishment to survive seem like something that would require passing a test? Well, I want to just suggest this morning that perhaps something in the way God answers their prayers and complaints can give us insight into the slightly unusual way that our passage goes today. So when I read this passage in preparation for today, I was struck by a tension that seems subtle at first, but then becomes pretty clear once you notice it. So God tells Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And then immediately after he says, each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. Did you catch the tension? So each day, bre bread will rain from heaven. It speaks of abundance 
and excess. While gathering enough for just the day speaks of self-control and limitation. This is the tension. God will provide so much nourishment for the people. It will seem to rain down from the sky, but the people can only have so much of it. The phrase rain bread from heaven sounds pretty familiar to another phrase that we use a lot in today's language. Although maybe um, here in Southern California, we don't use this as much, but have you ever looked outside during a thunderstorm and commented, boy, it's raining cats and dogs out there. I know we don't get a lot of raining cats and dogs kinds of rains, but you've heard that phrase before. This phrase is usually used to refer to these unusually large quantities of rain. So when I read the phrase raining bread from heaven, my mind was drawn to these images of abundance, of plenty, of excess. In the face of the Israelites need, God chooses to provide nourishment in abundance in mass quantities. But that isn't where the divine gifts end or at least abundance isn't where God stops. Right after the promise of abundance, God gives instructions, only take enough for that day. In other words, in the face of excess and plenty, employ limitation, moderation, and self-control. God gives Moses specific instructions on when the people are to gather the food, the morning and the evening, and how much they are to gather, just enough for one day. And when the people first see that strange food that God provides, described as a light and flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground, they say, what is it? And in Hebrew, this sounds something like manhu or manha. Moses gives the Lord's instructions to the people, but we didn't read it this morning, but in a few verses past our verses today, we can read that some of the people do not listen to those instructions and they gather more than they need for that day, hoping to store up the extra for future days. Sounds kind of reasonable. But the next morning, the extra manna that those people had stored away becomes rotten and filled with worms. This story has many implications for our lives today. Typically this passage is read and discussed to assure believers of God's provisions for our lives. The implications of this story for those who are in need, those families who live paycheck to paycheck, the single mothers who miss a meal so that their children can eat. The implication of this story for those folks is that even when we are hungry, afraid, and feel lost in the wilderness, God is present and meets our needs. Typically, this is a story about placing faith in God. And it's a powerful interpretation with lessons that resonate with each of us, even when we aren't wandering in deserts. But today I wanted to dig into a different, less common angle of this story that poses different challenges for us, especially for those of us who are not struggling to put food on our tables and clothes on our backs. As I've already mentioned, there is this tension in the text between abundance and restraint, between excess and self-control, between greed and contentment. God provides abundance, but instructs and expects moderation. And when the people decide to take more than they need for the day, their hoarding and their excess becomes rotten and ruined. In our 21st century first world context today, we can certainly come up with examples of celebrities or politicians or world leaders who certainly practice the opposite of moderation. We can all picture the lavish homes, expensive clothing, extravagant vacations. And I'm sure we can also think of a few people in our own lives who are always seeking more, more of the latest technology, the hottest music, the newest car. 
But this morning, I'm asking us to consider the ways that we ourselves might be storing up excess, like those Israelites storing up their extra manna. Because let's face it, the United States is one of the most richest, most abundant countries in the world. It's no surprise that the opportunities and resources available to even the most average citizen of this country surpasses what many around the world have access to. But this privilege goes beyond meeting our basic needs. It extends to overconsumption while millions around the world go without. A few years ago, the London School of Economics and Political Science did a study in which they estimated the average annual cost of providing basic needs, things like water, sanitation, education, and public health. To all people, the, the average annual cost of providing those things to all people would be around $28 billion. But every year in the United States, guess how much money is spent just on cosmetics, jewelry, and food? $45 billion. It's astounding to think how much Americans spend on excess when half of that amount could provide enough to ensure that all people are clean, healthy, and educated. But it's too simple to talk only in generalities. So let's look at our own lives a little bit more closely. Maybe you're one of those folks who always has to have the newest iPhone the week it comes out. Maybe not, but maybe you're one of those folks who buys such a large amount of groceries at the beginning of each week that by Saturday, you've had to throw a few things out that have gone bad. Perhaps you have clothes hanging in your closets with the tags still hanging on them years after you bought them. Now, all of you know that my husband Jason and I are expecting our first baby. And I'm sure this isn't news to anyone, but planning on becoming parents is a pretty big job. There are a lot of things that we have to do to get ready. And one of those things has been creating a registry for gifts so that our family and friends can have a variety of options to choose from to help us get ready for the baby. I couldn't help but notice how creating a gift registry serves as an interesting analogy for today's scripture. Okay, I know that a baby registry isn't a perfect analogy for the story of hungry Israelites, but just go with it here. <laughs> as we prepare to become parents, there are all sorts of things that we could use. Furniture, clothing, bath supplies, feeding supplies, books, the list can really go on and on. Like the Israelites, where we once were lacking in some of the basics, we are suddenly faced with an abundance of potential resources in front of us. The challenge for us, the test you might say, will be to practice moderation and sensibility in the face of such abundance. So we should have placed on our registry the items that we need not try to fill up our registry with all of the baby items we could ever possibly want or that ever existed. For example, um, for us, one item that is often acquired by new parents is a changing table, a piece of furniture that you use to change diapers while the baby, or before the baby is potty trained. But we talked about it and we wondered, do we need a whole other piece of furniture or can we get away with a changing pad, put that on top of a dresser that we already have. Yes, okay, so we probably don't need to ask for a whole additional piece of furniture, even though we're sure someone would buy that for us. <laughs> but do we need a crib? Or do we need a brand new car seat? Of course we do, those are necessities. Like the Israelites, we are suddenly faced with abundance, but we are tested to only gather, or I guess in our case, register for what we really need. 
Anna Grant Henderson, she once wrote, if the consequences of the Israelites greed were a consequence in my own life, it might help to curtail my times of excess in all sorts of areas. So in other words, if unfairly and unjustly taking advantage of God's abundance resulted in the same worm infested leftovers that the Israelites experienced, maybe we would rethink our own tendencies to overbuy, overstore, or overconsume. What if our excess started to rot and spoil like the Israelites' manna? Maybe we'd start thinking differently about what we want and what we really need. The brethren are no strangers to resisting the cultural impulse to always have more. Early brethren were immediately recognizable by their plain dress and avoidance of worldly things like brightly colored clothing and zippers and mustaches. And while today we might chuckle a little bit at the idea of zippers being, you know, too far out there, we can still recognize the spirit of these practices. Today, the Brethren standard of nonconformity has evolved into this modern value of simple living. Church of the Brethren website reads that Brethren think carefully about our daily choices. The ideal of simplicity guides our decisions. How will we conduct our business, raise our children, spend our leisure time, tend our natural resources? How will we use our money and why? How can we live comfortably, but without excess? For the brethren, such considerations are not a requirement, but a privilege. So it's clear that simplicity, intentionality, and moderation are both deeply brethren, as well as inherent expectations for living a faithful life. Earlier, I mentioned how this story from Exodus is usually used as a lesson in having the faith that God will provide, even when you're grumbling and complaining like a lost and hungry Israelite. I wanna be clear that the Israelites were not wrong to be hungry and to cry out to God when they ran out of food. They were far from the place they had lived for generations, wandering in the wilderness and unsure of where they were going and when they would get there. Understandably, they had their doubts and we often do too. Having doubts and verbalizing them is not a sign of a lack of faith, but in reality, it's a sign of trust. Being honest with God and not being afraid that voicing our struggles will end or damage our relationship, that takes a lot of trust. So I think what this story illustrates to us is that storing up excess, storing up more than we need is really the sign of a lack of trust in God. Hoarding more than you need essentially sends the message, I don't trust that God will provide, so I have to do it on my own. So this is our test. What will we do with an abundance of resources when God provides it? Now, our congregation is in this exact scenario right now, aren't we? The sale of our property has given us an abundance of financial resources. But we must remember that it is God and not us who has given us this gift of abundance in our own season of wilderness. We are the Israelites. Faced with the choice of trying to hoard and burrow away this gift or being judicious and faithful in discerning what we truly need and how this gift falls into that. We should all be in prayer about how to be the best stewards of this generous gift and blessing from God. In this way, we might all be spiritually nourished during our season of wilderness and our trust in God's provisions and faithfulness 
might be removed. This is our test of abundance. Amen. We do give thanks for God's goodness and faithfulness to us today. And so we will close our worship service with great is thy faithfulness. So I will share my screen with the music and you can sing along if you choose or just listen. Here now, the benediction. 
May God provide you with strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, this day and every day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning. We will turn to our announcements if you have any that you'd like to share. I do want to remind folks about all of the farewell events that we have coming up this coming weekend. It'll be a, a busy weekend for our congregation. On Friday at 7 p.m. is the virtual organ concert. This will be on YouTube. So there will be a link emailed to all of our members. It'll be on our social media pages uh, this week. You simply need to click on that link around 7 p.m. on Friday, and all of us will watch at the same time. I think there'll also be a chat function that you can use during the concert as well. So you can write little messages to say that you're there. And then the video will also be available on YouTube to watch after that evening. So you can go back to it. And the Spiritual Transitions team is also working on a potential CD of the music that may be coming. So just stay tuned. We hope to have more information about that. Secondly, is our in-person deconsecration service, which will take place on Saturday at four o'clock at the church. We will gather at the front of the building for a brief and simple service to give thanks for our 73 years of memories and ministries there and to offer prayers of blessing for the families who will come to live on that land. Our district executive minister, Russ Madison, will be joining us. Please plan to wear a mask and bring your own chair if you are able. We will have a few chairs there, um, but it will be helpful if anyone who can bring your own um, to, would do that. And then finally, our worship service next Sunday is our virtual farewell service. That service will focus on saying goodbye to our building, including scriptures, stories from our members, photos, and more. And we will follow that service with a time of fellowship over Zoom. We'll use breakout rooms so that we can have smaller conversations. So please um, plan on participating in that fellowship time as well after the service next week. If you have any questions about any of those things, reach out to me or any member of the Spiritual Transitions team, which is made up of Laura Lovelace, Diane Deal, Bill Lemon, and Yvonne Belcher. Other announcements? I'm just gonna add on real quick, Lauren. Um, if you have any friends who are coming to the virtual farewell service on the 16th, um, please make sure they register uh, RSVP to the church office so we can get them the Zoom link. Thank you, yes. I have two. I'm uh, making an announcement and a reminder from Janet because she's having trouble getting it out. The executive committee, Thursday at 6.30, reminder. And also a very short meeting for the deacons tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Some of you can't come, I know that. It's just a one item thing, it'll take very little time. Thank you. And also to add to everything else, we have a shower on Sunday at three o'clock for Jason and Lauren and baby that will be coming very quickly. Um, you will need to read, respond to ACA because that's how you're going to get the link to how to get into the shower. So it's really important that you let ACA know. Because we have to do it online. And uh, in addition, um, if you have a gift to drop off at either the Lovelaces, the Hearts, or the Spicers, that needs to be to them by Wednesday the 12th so that we can get it to the office and it will be at, uh, then Lauren, we'll make sure it gets to Lauren and Jason's in time for the shower. So thank you. I have uh, from service and outreach, uh, don't forget your uh, money to the food pantry since we're not collecting food in the wagon right now, obviously. 
And this month, our monthly giving emphasis is for the Church of the Brethren, the Pentecost offering. And the Pentecost offering uh, includes church planting and congregational vitality. So just keep that in mind as you decide on your giving this month. Thank you. Uh, for the local members, um, I think I've sent out either an email or a written letter about the dinners with Jerry. Uh, they won't start until June, but maybe you can start uh, looking at your calendar to see when you and Jerry might share a meal together and uh, contact him directly. Thank you. Just a reminder, the logistics team, we have a meeting tomorrow evening at seven. Any other announcements? Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us in worship. Uh, happy Mother's Day to those of you who are mothers or love mothers, <laughs> uh, which hopefully should be all of you. All of you love a mother in your life. <laughs> um, so blessings on your Sunday, and thanks again for joining us for worship. Um, I'm going to hop in here because my microphone finally just decided to unmute. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to say one thing that um, I could have said during Joy's Concerns, but I just to let all of you know, I, it was really in my heart to be able to give some things away from church to our neighborhood. And so as John and I have been doing other work at church, we've just been pulling things out that weren't going to storage. And people in the neighborhood have been thrilled. Oh, with shelves, crazy. with toys, with vases. Vases and silk flowers are a big hit. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that, that people coming by and driving by the church are getting some of those things that we chose not to take with us. Keeps them out of the landfill, gives them to somebody who wants them. I figured it was a win-win. Thank you, Janet. Great news. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.